Let's look at some examples on logical consequence and equivalence. So we have uh, some statements on the left-hand side, some statements on the right-hand side. And we need to determine whether the left-hand side implies the right-hand side and whether the right-hand side implies the left-hand side. Okay. If we just have one or the other, then we have logical consequence. And if it works both ways, we have logical equivalence. So let's start with these two at the top. We have the object is a cube. The object has six faces. OK, so if we ignore the statement on the right, if the object is a cube, then the object definitely has six faces. So the arrow definitely works from left to right. Now, if we ignore the statement on the left, and we just consider that the object has six faces, does that necessarily mean that the object is a cube? Well, no, because the object could be a cuboid, for example. It doesn't have to be a cube. So because it doesn't work from right to left, the arrow is pointed just left to right in this case. Let's have a look at example number two. x equals 29 x is greater than 10. So if we ignore this statement, if we're told that x is equal to, 10, x is equal to 29, then clearly x is greater than 10. So the arrow definitely points from left to right. Now, if we ignore the left-hand statement and we just look at x is greater than 10, then x could be any number that's greater than 10. 10.5, um, 10 11, 100. That doesn't necessarily mean that x has to be 29. So although it works from the left to the right, it doesn't work from right to left. The third example, we've got x cubed is equal to x. And x equals minus 1. OK, so... Does it work from left to right? So if we've got just been given x cubed is equal to x, what are the solutions to this equation? Well, we're going to have to subtract x from both sides. So if we write this as x cubed minus x equals 0, we then need to factorise that. Okay. So if we pull out the x, and we're going to have x squared minus 1. And then we would factorise that, because that's the difference of two squares. We would have x, x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. Which means that if this is true, then the solutions to this equation are 0, 1, and minus 1. It doesn't mean that x is equal to minus 1. Although x equals minus 1 is one of the solutions, it doesn't mean it is the solution. So the arrow definitely doesn't go from left to right. However, if we start with x is equal to minus 1, then if I cube minus 1, I get minus 1. So when I cube it, I get the same value. So x cubed equals x. Definitely, if x is equal to minus 1. So it does work from right to left. But it didn't work from left to right. OK, so the arrow is just pointing from right to left this time. Then finally, we've got the last example. Given that n is a positive integer greater than 1, so we're given that information to begin with, and then we have these two statements n is a prime number, n has exactly two factors. Well, if n is a positive integer greater than 1, and n is a prime number, OK, so we're thinking 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, OK, that means that n has exactly two factors. That is the definition of it being a prime number. The fact that its only factors are 1 and itself. 
Okay, so the arrow definitely works from left to right. Now, given that n is a positive integer greater than 1, and n has exactly two factors, the only numbers that have two factors are those that are prime. So that means that it does also work from right to left. Because n has exactly two factors, n has to be prime. So these two bits of information are equivalent. OK, so if n is a prime number, we know that it has exactly two factors. And if we know that it has exactly two factors, n is a prime number. OK, so it works both ways.